Hi, loves. I'm Reverend Joya here to help you live your best vibe. And this week in Vocalumina, we are talking about radical self-honesty. And I wanted to dive into a little YouTube talk about this because it's such a profound awareness. I had one given to me that was really profound in this book that uh, in my book of downloads that I wanted to share with you and also share about um, why radical self-honesty is so important. And the first thing that I want to say about radical self-honesty is that we need to cultivate self-awareness so that we can be radically honest with ourselves. And being honest with ourselves is to take total responsibility for what it is you're saying, doing, thinking, and being in the world. You don't get to blame it on anybody else. And that's what mastery is, is taking full responsibility for your experiences that you're having in life. And then to look at those experiences as data. So if I look at the outcome of my life, if I look at the, my home, my messes, my finances, my relationships, like all of it, if I take all of it into account and look at it, I can then without judgment, ask myself through the lens of radical self-honesty, what am I creating? What vibration of energy am I creating from? So that's the first reason that we want to be in tune with our radical self-honesty so that we can now come into the present moment and align to what we're allied to, which I talked about that last week in last week's talk. So, but I do want to share in here about betrayal. So I've been watching this show on Hulu. I watched this show on Hulu called Betrayal, which is also based on a podcast. And it really got me thinking because this man lived as this completely duplicitous life that his wife thinks he's this person but he's leading this whole other double life that she knew nothing about. And I was like, how can someone live like that unless they authentically don't know who they are? And I started thinking about chameleon energy. And in my talk that I'm now giving and getting on stages and giving, I share how at a very young age, I shut down all of the feelings inside of my body because I was such a deeply sensitive child. And I actually have sensitivity in my gene keys because I was such a sensitive child. I shut that down. I shut the body down. And I also have a split definition in my human design between my Ajna and the rest of my body. So having that split definition made it easy to shut down my body and basically be a talking head on a body. And I approached my healing completely through my thoughts. But when I was younger, this ability to shut down my conscious awareness of my energy body. The energy body is still working. The energy body is still functioning. I'm just not aware of what it's doing because I've shut it down, but it's still operating. And so why I became what I label actually as a masterful chameleon, I learned how to mold my own energy to fit into any group of people, any situation, number one, to stay safe and number two, to not be seen. So this was my hiding energy. Now, what if I knew I was able to do this energy? Then it comes with a manipulative behavior. And so I was, as I was watching this show, I was thinking, you know, does this guy just not know who he is? And so he cultivated and developed this manipulate, manipulative behavior that he can see what he wants. He could see the outcome that he wants. And he can also read people's energies and their energy patterns. And so he knows how to manipulate or steer the consciousness and psychology and energy body of another person to get what he wants. That's really what manipulation is and what this betrayal is. And so I started asking, you know, what about when you're born into betrayal? What if you're born into a family where the love that you're supposed to be getting, you don't receive and that you are condemned and shamed for being who you are. And so you do shut down and you become a chameleon in order to survive. But you don't know that you have this ability to read other people's energy. And so when we take a conscious use of this energy, right, when we when we can look at our patterns of behavior and say, wow, I really have unconsciously manipulated other people to get what I want so that I don't have to be direct and asking for what I want so that I don't have to face rejection and disappointment. Now, if you have watched any of my videos, you know that those are my two biggest uh, karmic fears that I came into this lifetime to heal. 
And I've been working on healing those, but this energy of chameleon behavior and manipulation go hand in hand. And one is really a, it's a dysfunctional manifesting process that you're manipulating other people for your own gain versus the ability to read other people's energy so that you can actually show up as love and meet them for who they are, where they are without judgment. And I can say that I have flipped that energy, that I've utilized this energy consciously now as I've come more and more home into my body, I can feel more of my senses coming online and my sensitivities coming back online and knowing that I do have this gift of meeting people for who they are, where they are without being a chameleon, because now I no longer show up in the world and the chameleon shows up in the world. The unhealed chameleon shows up in the world asking, who do you want me to be? And then they mold their self into becoming that person versus knowing who you are and you show up in the world saying, this is who I am. That's a totally different vibrational place to come from. So it's the same gift, the same sensitivity of being able to read other people's energy fields, but used, one is used for selfish gain by the ego and dysfunctionally, and one is used by your higher self for love, expansion, and creation for the good of all humanity. And as I was writing about this in my journal and getting some Magdalene downloads, we talked a lot about the manipulative energy and flipping the switch of consciousness so that you can see like to have radical self-honesty is to see and know that you have that ability in you and that's without judgment, right? So we, I was able to look at this behavior and say, oh my gosh, there are definitely times I manipulated people to get what I wanted, to get an outcome that I wanted at the expense of some other person's well-being. And so I sat there and just sent deep forgiveness to myself for my own ignorance of operating from that level of vibrational consciousness. That level of ego is way down here. That's way down there. But I operated from that consciousness because I didn't know any better. And so this is the this is the beauty and this is where grace comes in when we're when we can embody our higher self and we can show up and meet somebody where they're at and we can now see and witness this kind of behavior in another person. We don't need to judge them for it but we can reflect back meeting them for who they are, where they are. We can reflect back the love and possibility that they can step into when they step out of this operation and being in the small self. And so what she said me and see she being the Magdalene council, what they wrote was just so beautiful. Childhood trauma. I asked about childhood trauma and being born into the ultimate betrayal, being unloved and abused, abused by the people around you. So I learned to hide my real self who was negated and shamed just for being who I am. And I didn't have an inner identity and I adopted the energy patterns of those around me. And she said, this is chameleon behavior, but this gift holds the gift of reading other people's energy and knowing how to respond to it consciously or unconsciously. It can be a very beautiful gift when it's used in the light. You, and she's talking about all of us, you have to dig deep to uncover who you were never allowed to be, for that is who you really are. Isn't that beautiful? I just thought that was so profoundly beautiful, that that's what this whole work is all about. You have to dig deep to uncover who you were never allowed to be, for that is who you really are. The chameleon behavior comes when they stop being who they think they are, and take on the personalities of the world externally. And you're showing up as who do you want me to be versus this is who I am, which is why chameleons show up differently for different people and have a wide variety of people they show up as because they mirror the person before them because their true self has been lost. And I just really love that. I And then I go on just talking about my own betrayals and abandonments and disappointments and this healing and seeing the mirror of this in my own life, in my relationships as of late, I think is so fascinating in being in this, in um, some, a few relationships with people where the energy is that they're manipulative. And I see that they're manipulative, but the importance of 
embodying the true self, embodying the high self means you can't be manipulated by them because you're not also asking the question in return, who do you want me to be? And when two people show up as who do you want me to be? Oh, it's just, it's chaos. It's catastrophe. It's drama. It's all kinds of problems. It's, it's this big ego messes that we create versus showing up in this is who I am. When you know who you are, the manipulator is going to move on from your energy field because they're going to know that you have such a strong sense of self. There are manipulative people though, who will stick around because they want to siphon your energy and they'll pretend to be like you because they're mirroring back to you who you are. They're mirroring back to you a sense of self that you love and respect. So this is a very subtle and very interesting manipulation tactic that I've been um, in, in the experience of recently. And, but I was able to see it. I was able to see what this person was doing because they didn't have any interests of their own. They didn't have any businesses, any business going on of their own. They didn't have, um, they didn't have anything of their own. They were really trying to uh, mimic me because they're lost in the world. They don't know who their true self is. And so rather than responding with um, feeding that manipulative energy, having a close relationship with this person, Instead, I reflect back to them their possibilities because I see their possibilities. I see their potentialities. And this being number one, you're very sensitive to other people's energies. That means you can use it for good, whether you're a counselor, a therapist, a coach of any sort, right? That we can show up as the space of love and reflect back a higher way of being instead of reflecting back to them what they think about themselves, which is really like this lower self, this lower way of being that they're hiding. We yeah. want to stop worshiping our fear. And this is the whole point of becoming and reclaiming our, our true self. This is the whole point in doing the work of being radically self-honest with yourself. And this is what the Marys had to, had to say with me about this. Heal deeply rooted energetic patterns you no longer wish to create from. Do not create from shame or fear of any kind. Self-judgment is to judge your own self for a past experience and know what a waste of time that is. And that act of self-judgment calls to the self more experiences of shame. The root weed that is spoiling the garden must be pulled up. And that weed is fear and its many manifestations. And then I said, in my third eye, I'm seeing an image of a dandelion and the seeds each are a different fear. And she said, yes, exactly. You work with the gene keys, which tell you the 64 faces of fears. These are the shadows of the ego. You can work with those tangibly. So this is what she just told me about those. And this is my um, download about that. And that we do need to dig deeply to get to the self that we were never allowed to be. Isn't that what all healing work is? Getting to this true self, getting back to our authentic self, getting back to this authentic expression and way of being in the world. And that's not to say that I'm going to, you know, we're going to go back and start acting like three-year-olds. We're not talking about behavior. We're talking about a vibrational way of being, a reclamation of your gifts, your talents, your abilities, your truest desires, your soul's purpose, all of it, your passions, your love, your drive, your light. This is really what this radical self-honesty is about. Radical self-honesty also comes very important as you're doing this work of ascension because you'll reach a point where your ego is now going to start really, really arguing for your smallness and your ego knows how to trick you, which is why you need to be super aware of all of the ways that the ego knows how to manipulate your own self, your own being. The, your ego is an alive gestalt. It's an alive thing that you yourself have created and it wants to hold on for dear life. So one of the ways that it's going to kick up when you're doing a lot of spiritual work, you're doing a lot of ascension work, is it's going to start telling you that you've arrived. You've arrived somewhere. So you don't need to do these daily practices anymore. You've arrived. So you don't have to do your daily meditation, your daily yoga, your daily prayers, your daily chanting, whatever it is that you do that keeps yourself spiritually aligned and vibrationally aligned, it will start telling you, you don't need to do all that stuff anymore. And when you listen to that, you're going to start backsliding. It's all of a sudden you're like, 
oh, these old feelings come back in the body because you are now believing yourself. You're believing what yourself is telling you about yourself rather than you speaking to yourself from a different level of vibration. So the work though, is to ignore that feeling. What's interesting is that the, the ego will then turn on you. So I had this experience where instead of it now telling me, oh, you don't need to do your practices anymore. You've arrived. You're so, you're so much more enlightened now. You're so much more spiritually attuned. You're, you're there that when I started having the feelings of oh, that's BS, I'm going to keep doing my practices. Then the ego got mean. It turned on me into the, who do you think you are? Oh my God, look at you showing up. Like it was really a fascinating thing to be in witness of like, wow, you're going to really do anything to fight and stay alive and to stay as the constant vibration of consciousness in my body. But I'm not going to have it because I know who I am. I know that I'm a divine being having and using this body, this vehicle, this voice to express the divinity of Christ consciousness as it flows in me, through me, as me. And I want that to be more and more and more who I am. That's all I want to show up as in the world. So with that, this is uh, the practice of knowing who your true self is and being in total, utter self-honesty about what's running you, what patterns are running you, taking total responsibility for your life and your experience in it so that you can create greater self-awareness, greater integrity, greater self-love. The more that you align yourself and you align your integrity, the more self-love comes to play a role in your life. And this self-love is very much married to self-respect and a feeling of reverent awe toward the creative source, knowing that that's a part of you, that you're a teeny tiny little speck of this immense grace of this immense field is really very humbling. So it's, it's married to this whole energetic signature of how you're choosing to show up in the world. So I encourage you to set your inner vision. And this is something that I wrote. And in fact, why don't I get a bowl? I'll get a little bowl and read this because it's very beautiful and it will help you be aligned with your true self so that you can call out your false self and stop showing up as that. Knowing that our bad habits, everything in your life is revealing to you everything in your life that you can change because you're the orchestrator, you're the creator, you're the writer of the story, you're the script, you're the producer, you're the actor, you're the all of it in this little field of your reality, in this little field of your universe. And if you think about it, you are your own universe. And so we want to be totally self-honest with ourselves so that we can know when the ego is tricking us out of our own ascension. So with that, I'm going to read this with my beautiful bowls. I set my inner vision upon the dream God has planted in me. I envision myself living into that person and I give thanks to Source for that vision and for the fulfillment of it. divine inherencies of source and I claim them as my own all is in the all holy I am there is nothing my holiness cannot do and I see with eyes that can see and ears that can hear all of the ways I am blocking my light and arguing for my small self and I release it with grace, ease, 
and gratitude now. I let it be so, and so it is. Thank you for joining me this week with this talk. And as always, I invite you into the Vocalumina community at school.com forward slash Vocalumina. Link is in the notes. And I encourage you to listen to this meditation, to claim this as your own, to claim this as the essence of your being. And know that the moment that you claim who you truly are, that your ego is going to start kicking up dust saying, no, you're not. This is who you are. This is who you are. So the self-honesty requires and asks that you look at that. Look at everything that is unlike what you are claiming. And it's going to show you all the things that are ready to be cleaned up in your life. All right, big love. I'll see you next week. Bye. Mm -hmm.